Hey everyone, it's me RGP guy back with another video and in today's video we are going to understand how transparency works in computer graphics. Before we understand transparency, let us recap how opaque objects are rendered. So if you take a look at the depth buffer video, you would understand how opaque objects are rendered. Let's just revise how opaque objects are rendered. Whenever you have any 3D model, its data is sent over to the GPU. That data is sent to the vertex shader. Then we have the fragment shader and then it comes on the screen. And while writing this fragment color to the screen, if let's say the depth test is on, then we would check what is the depth value of this fragment. If the depth value of this fragment is higher than the existing depth value at this point, it means that that fragment is behind and that's when we don't draw it. If it is in the front, then we draw it. This is how normally 3D objects are drawn with the depth buffer test. You can check out the depth buffer explained video for more details. In case of transparency, we would first have to understand what RGBA is. If you have any image, it's basically made up of pixels. And each pixel is nothing but a RGB value. There is also fourth value, which is A or alpha. This value decides what is the transparency value? What is the opacity value of this pixel? If the alpha value is zero, it's completely transparent. If the alpha value is one, it's opaque. Basically alpha is the opacity value that we define. The second thing we need to understand is blending. So blending is also very simple. Blending basically decides, let's say you have an existing buffer of some RGB value. You have an image with RGB A. Blending decides how you want to mix these two images. Blending is a per pixel operation. So it will decide how you want to mix this particular pixel with this pixel, right? So in any kind of graphics application, you can specify your blending rule, which is, is it additive blending? Is it subtractive blending? There are other ways to blend as well. So let's say for now we decide that our blending rule is going to be additive, which is plus. So the first thing that we decided was the rule. In this case, we are considering it as additive. The second thing that we need to decide is the blending or blend function. Let's say this is C0, color zero, and this is C1. We decided that it's additive blending. So this is C0 plus C1. But this won't be directly added. There would be some kind of multiplier. Let's name the multiplier as X and Y. So when we decide the blending rule, we decide what is this going to be? And when we decide the blend function, we decide what these constants are going to be. So there are multiple ways to decide the blend function. I'll just show you an example. There's an amazing website that helps you understand how blending works. So here we have selected the source image, this particular image that you are seeing, which I'm pointing to these two birds standing. This is the source image and the grass is the destination image. So this is the destination image. We can actually change the source image and the destination image as well. If I open this image in a new tab, you see that these values are blank. So these values are basically alpha zero. If you check, if you check these values, you'll see that there is like, there is this transparent grid, right? These grid values have alpha zero. So we have an image with alpha value zero in this area. And then we have a non-transparent image which has alpha value one, which is the background. Now we decided that our blend equation is going to be GL function add, which is this plus, which we already discussed here. This is an additive blending. And then we also decided what are these constants? So the constants are decided this way. The constant for the source here is GL source alpha. So we'll be using the alpha of the source image and for destination, we'll use one minus source alpha. Now, what does that mean? Now let's just rewrite. Let's say you had an image like this and the alpha mask of this image was a circle where this area is all black. And this is alpha equals to one inside this image. We have a circle with alpha equals to one. And then there is this image of a grass. Right. 
and now we have decided that we'll be blending them in an additive manner with the constant of this and this this is constant is alpha and this constant is 1 minus alpha in this case how would we blend these two images if we multiply these values with this image the, the output of this will be 0 so alpha times this image will be equal to this something like this right now you add it with 1 minus alpha times of this image so 1 minus alpha times of this image would be again there would be a circle and here it would be this way here it would be blank and if you add both of these images the final output will look something like this so you would have a this part here and then this here So what did you do here? You essentially pasted an image with transparent parts on a background. So that is what blending is. You understood what RGBA is and you also understood how we blend images together. Now let's understand what happens when we try to render a semi-transparent image. For this, let's create a hypothetical example. Let's imagine that you have a window and you have a player standing behind that window. This window is a separate 3D model and this person is a separate 3D model. This window is transparent. So you should see half of the player and half of the player should be occluded behind the wall. Now let's try to render this with a usual Z buffer algorithm, which we discussed in the previous video. In Z buffer algorithm, the order of rendering doesn't matter. Every time we are rendering a new object, we would check its depth with the depth buffer. If the depth is like closer to the camera, we'll render that object. If the depth is farther from the camera, we won't render that object as simple as it sounds. Now let's take this algorithm and try to apply it on a transparent object. Uh, what happens? The first case is we render the man and then we render the window, window or wall. In this case, we have a depth buffer and we have a color buffer. The depth values of the man are written to the depth buffer and the color values of the man are also written to the color buffer. When we try to render the wall, what will happen? Since the man is standing behind the wall, the depth values will be higher. And that means the depth values for the wall are closer. And since the wall is closer, we'll draw the complete wall. There won't be any issue in this case. If you draw the man first and then the wall, let's say the alpha of this part is 0.5. By using additive blending and the alpha of this part, we would get the correct output image, right? We would draw the wall as it is. And since we are additive blending, we'll see the man here. So this is correct. In the same way, in the color buffer also same thing will happen right now let's take a second case where we are drawing the wall first and then the man what happens in this case this is the case which will have problems if you go ahead with the depth buffer approach z buffer approach so in this case let's say we are drawing the wall first so what will happen the depth values of the wall will be written because the wall is flat and all the depth values are closer to the camera, the wall is flat. We'll have a nice and smooth depth value written here. And we'll also draw this wall on the color buffer. And this is the Z buffer. Now it's time to draw the man. When we are drawing the man, we are seeing that the depth value of the man is behind the wall. And hence, by Z buffer algorithm, we'll discard it. In this case, what will happen? There would be nothing there. There would be nothing drawn. We'll just have the wall because all the fragments which are related to this man will be discarded, right? When we are rendering any kind of transparent object, we cannot use the Z buffer algorithm directly. One solution of this problem could have been while writing the transparent object to the depth buffer, we can switch the depth testing to off. If we switch off the depth testing in this case, what happens? Let's take a look at that. So we are drawing the wall first. We are switching off the depth testing. Hence, nothing will be written to the depth buffer. We'll write to the color buffer. So as usual, we have written to the color buffer. Since depth testing was off, there is nothing on the depth buffer. And so while rendering the man, the depth values of the man would be written here. And on the color buffer, we would actually see the man in front. If we switch off the depth testing, then this case fails. Similarly, if we switch on the depth testing, this case fails. 
so what to do what to do how do we render how do we render transparent objects so we have a solution for this for rendering transparent objects we'll first draw all the opaque objects so in our case this is the color buffer and this is the depth buffer the man is completely opaque hence we'll write that man to the depth buffer we'll write that man to the color buffer as well and the second step is to sort all the transparent objects we'll sort all the transparent objects from back to front and then draw them separately we drew all the opaque objects and then on top of that we draw the transparent objects right so this first case first case would be simulated we'll be uh, we'll be drawing the man first and then we'll be drawing the window wall in this case and hence it will work correctly this will also work correctly in case there are multiple transparent objects now let's imagine one window which is transparent and if you have another window which is behind this and which is also transparent so it should have been drawn like this again this case would work well like this is like behind and this is in the front so this case would work perfectly well if the behind window is drawn first and then the front window is drawn this case would work well if the behind window is drawn first and the front window is drawn if you draw the front window first then again this value would be returned to the depth buffer and when we try to draw this window we'll see that this part has a depth value which is closer to the camera since it's closer to the camera we'll discard the pixels so if we draw so in in the case where we are drawing this front one first and back one we'll get an output which is something like this so there is a very good example on learnopengl.com you can go ahead and check out the website in this example you are seeing that there are three transparent windows this is window number 1 this is window number 2 and this is window number 3 there is also an opaque object which is object number 4 let me just guess the order of drawing right let's ignore this box let's just guess the order of drawing so i think the first thing that is drawn here is or box number 4 after that the window number 1 is drawn after that window number 3 is drawn and after that window number 2 is drawn since the box was drawn first its depth value were written and then we drew window number 1 since the box was drawn first and then the window was drawn this part of the box was still visible right but since we are drawing window number 3 after it this part of this window is cut this is cut because the depth values of the window number 1 are closer to the camera hence these pixels are discarded for window number 2 again the window number 3 is blending properly with window number 2 because that window number 3 is drawn first and then on top of that we are drawing window number 2 so this is correct but then again the this part is missing this part is missing so this is again because we are drawing window number 1 first this could have been corrected if we would have drawn like 4 first and then 3 and then 2 and then 1 right this way none of the pixels would be discarded and they could be combined properly so that's why the order of rendering matters in transparent objects and that's how you render transparent objects in the most simple way there's one more problem to rendering this even if you are sorting the transparent objects properly from their depth there's always an issue of intersection so if say a uh, two triangles that are semi transparent are intersecting we cannot order them because they are intersecting and that is where order independent transparency comes in so in the next video we'll check out order independent transparency if you understood how transparency works in computer graphics do hit the subscribe button and leave your thoughts in the comments till then take care have a nice day bye bye